Hello everyone, I'm Mikhail from Pet School Academy. I'm a couple of minutes late. Facebook just changed up how to go live on me, which was terrifying, but I figured it out and here I am. I hope you can see me, I hope you can hear me. All right, welcome to today's topic, which is how to raise a confident puppy when we can't socialize them. So these are really crazy times for us. I know pretty much all of you will be watching this from home. You've probably got your kids running around. I certainly do. I feel quite discombobulated. I feel like my workspace is more like trying to work in a train station at the moment. It's pretty crazy. But the cool thing is, if you are at home with your dog, they are going to be loving it. This is the best thing that ever happened to dogs. <laughs> so I am going to be reading from my notes today. I apologize for that. But like I said, I just feel a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to hit all my um, talking points for you because I know this is really, really important. Normally, when people get puppies, I really encourage them to socialize their puppies, right? To go and meet everybody they can, people of all different ages and sizes and races and just really try and get your dogs comfortable with a lot of different people and then also play your dogs with other dogs and get them comfortable reading and exhibiting body language with lots of different dogs, lots of different shapes, sizes, ages, ages. So obviously that's not an option right now, but I don't want you to worry about it. As a result of not being able to socialize your dog at the moment, your dog may not ever be the life of the party, but that's fine, right? I mean, we can't all be the life of the party, but your dog will be really, really well trained. Your dog will absolutely adore you. It could be worse. It could be way, way worse. <laughs> and I also know a problem for some people at the moment on both sides of the equation is breeders are having to give up their puppies a little bit earlier than they normally would. So are shelters. And also people are adopting puppies a little bit earlier than is recommended. So the recommended age generally is about eight weeks. I personally prefer them to stay with their mum a little bit longer, um, to stay with their mum and with their litter mates because it just gives them more of a chance to learn bite inhibition and learn how to play with other dogs and learn when to back off. So whatever. I mean, this is just how it is and we're just going to deal with it. And in throughout this um, live, I'm going to tell you all of the ideas that I came up with for ways that you can raise a confident puppy when you can't socialize them. So the first one is, same as what I'd be advising anyway, you're going to train your puppy. And you're going to train your puppy to watch, sit, leave it, wait, and come. Now, obviously, we'd be training these anyway, but you are going to absolutely bomb proof these commands with your dogs because you're at home. This is such an awesome opportunity. Your dogs are going to be better trained than any dogs ever in history. <laughs> so sure, they might not know how to read other dogs body language, but they're going to know how to listen to you. And through rewards-based training, you build up a beautiful connection between the two of you. You build up a line of communication between the two of you. And when you finally are allowed to go outside again, your dog is going to know how to listen to you. They're going to know that they should listen to you. And they're going to know how to respond when they hear your commands. This is actually really amazing. I'm, I'm really excited to see what the action at the dog park is going to be like in a few months. I actually think this is going to be great. So don't despair, all right? And then in the description for this video, I've listed um, links to my blog posts that talk about how to train these commands and their step-by-step instructions. So you can't get it wrong, but if you do get it wrong, let me know and I will readjust my instructions.
All right, so that's the first one, right? We're gonna, we're gonna train our dogs and they're gonna be bomb proof. The next thing I want you to do, if you're allowed, is to go for daily walks. If your puppy's too young to be walking on the ground themselves because they're not fully vaccinated, you can carry them around or you could go and sit in your car and leave the window down and then just let the puppy smell things, see things, hear things without actually being in any danger of picking up any sort of nasty virus. Not coronavirus, by the way. I don't actually think that's a thing um, for dogs. But, you know, you don't want them to go and pick up parvo or anything else. So if your dog's too little, you may just need to carry them around, but still take them out if you can. Um, because that's really, really important. And then if they are allowed to walk, I want you to change up the route so they get to experience different areas, different neighborhoods, and change up the texture. Because this is another way that you can raise a really calm and confident puppy is by teaching them really early on that walking over bridges, walking on concrete, walking on grass, walking on tiles, walking on lino, that all of these things are okay. And it also really helps to helps them figure out their balance and their core strength and it helps build up body awareness. Another thing you can do is walk um, up curbs, down curbs, get them to jump onto park benches, get them to climb under park benches, weave in and out of trees, anything that you can do that kind of makes things a little bit more interesting and teaches them yeah, how to balance and to build up that core strength. And that is going to help with their confidence a lot. Let them smell all the beautiful smells. Hear as many sounds as you can. I know it's really quiet where I am at the moment. I'm, I'm in Wellington. We are on full lockdown because of coronavirus. So, you know, there just aren't the normal sounds that they would get. But if they can hear anything, make it a good experience for them build up their confidence that way. All right, the third thing you can do at home, which again is something that I would encourage you to do, or I would have encouraged you to do even before we were all in lockdown, is a lot of handling. And what I mean by this is you want your dog to be fully comfortable having their ears grabbed, having their eyes looked at, their mouths looked at, their tails pulled gently, their butts looked at. I know that's not the best, you know, that's not the most fun, but the fact is that's where their temperature is taken when they go to the vet. So they're going to have to be comfortable having their tails lifted. Um, their paws should all be, you know, gently move the little pads apart and play with their paws. And you should be doing this multiple times a day. And then also grooming, because especially if your dog is the sort of dog with this sort of coat that is going to require grooming, do your groomers a favor and really, really get your animals, your dogs comfortable with being groomed at home. So brushing, bringing scissors near, near their eyes, because if they've got, you know, big tufts around their eyes, you don't actually have to cut but just getting them used to their sensation of the sort of equipment that they'd be using or that they'd be experiencing at a groomer. Put them in the bath, dry them off with, with a hairdryer, you know, just really, really bomb-proof all of that handling. If your dog doesn't like being handled, work with them so that they're under threshold. What I mean by that is if they get freaked out when you touch them with a brush, don't touch them with the brush. Let them sniff the brush and then give them a reward for that. And then move the brush a little bit closer until eventually, like step by step, you're doing something that kind of scares them, you're rewarding them. What they learn is that that thing isn't so scary after all. But you cannot push them too hard too fast. So if they're anxious about being brushed, don't brush them back it up a notch, just touch them with the brush. If they're still anxious about that, put the brush on the ground, let them sniff it, give them a reward for that. And then gradually work your way up until they're comfortable being fully handled. Another thing that's really awesome to do is grabbing their collar a lot. Um, this will, again, it seems a little odd, but if you need to grab your dog really, really quickly, or if they 
leave the property and somebody else needs to grab them quickly, you don't want them to turn around and snap at that hand. You want them to be really confident with, with having their collars grabbed. It's really important. Okay, and then this one is going to be super easy if you have kids. <laughs> you need to make heaps of noise. Heaps of noise. Your dogs are kind of being raised in the quietest time in world history. So make a lot of noise. Get out some pots and pans. Pop balloons. Um, grind coffee. Make coffee. Use the blender. Just do whatever you can do to make a hell of a lot of noise. Now if your puppy, again it's a little bit like with the, um, with the grooming and the handling, you don't want to just dump all this noise on them and expect them to cope because that's probably not the best approach but do it one at a time okay so you've got one pot you've got one spoon bang it once give them a reward bang it twice give them a reward and then you know just gradually work your way up till you've got this whole cacophony <laughs> of pot banging going on um, but make a lot of noise if you can find noises on YouTube things like buses, um, that awful noise that buses make and I don't know whether it's when they're taking off or when they're slowing down or whatever but they just make that really awful noise that scares the crap out of you. If that's something your dog is going to experience on a normal day-to-day -day basis when life gets back to normal, try and find that noise on the internet and play it really loudly. Um, pretty much any noise they're going to get after we're out of self-isolation try and find that for them now and reward them, praise them, love on them, let them know that that noise is nothing to worry about. So that's, yeah, that's probably the easiest one to do if you've got kids at home. And then the last, or not the last one, the next one is play inside games with your dog. And again, I'm going to link to my blog post with some ideas of games you can play with your dogs inside. You want to keep them stimulated, you want to keep them um, interested, <laughs> you want to keep them entertained, you also want to keep them out of mischief. So again, if you can set up the environment, set up situations so that they can only get it right, then that's an awesome situation for your dog. So I don't know what your house is like, I've got toys scattered all around the floor, um, that's not ideal. So if you can get your kids to at least put their toys somewhere that the puppy can't reach them and then, you know, spread your puppy's toys out around the room so that they can only grab puppy toys, then that's a really good way to set them up. Stuffing Kongs or puzzle toys with treats and their food is also a great way to keep them entertained. If it's hot where you are, put them in the freezer so you can turn them into little Kongsicles or Pupsicles and it will just take them a little bit longer to get through them. Um, so check out that blog post because there were some games in there that you can play that just work their minds a bit more. And then the last one is hand feed all meals. And again, this isn't something new. This is something I would be teaching you to do anyway, but I think this is a really great opportunity. Since you're inside and you're with your dog, hand feed all meals and get them to work for their food. So you might want them to watch or sit or wait or leave it or whatever command you're working on, but make them do something for each piece of kibble or each little handful of wet food, whatever they're on. And this is great because you're not, especially if you've got a brand new puppy, maybe you got your puppy today, um, you don't want to be using treats right now. Just use their regular food because they've only got little tummies and you don't want to have diarrhea all over your house when you're stuck inside. Um, yeah, so hand feeding all meals, it helps um, with handleability. So back to handling, if your dog is used to having your hands around their face and around their food that's awesome and it also cuts down on any sort of resource guarding because again your dog isn't going to see you as competition so they're not going to start guarding their food and they're not going to start guarding the couch or the bed or whatever um, they're going to see you as the best thing ever and they're going to trust that when your hands are around their food and around their mouths that that is awesome for them so 
I just want to assure you or reassure you that your dogs are going to be fine. Again, they're not going to be the life of the party. When, when we come out on the other side of this and you go to the dog park, your dog may not know how to interact or how to exhibit body language or how to read body language. But they'll know that you're there. They'll know how to listen to you. They'll know how to respond to you. So if you if you notice that your dog is getting a little bit anxious when they're around other dogs, just pull them back. Just take them further out of the park or take them further away and then just reinforce those training commands you've been working on. It'll get them to refocus on you. It'll remind them that you know what you're doing, that you're the most important thing anyway, um, and they're going to be fine. They just might be a little wary. And so we'll just have a bunch of dogs who get released at the same time who are just a little bit wary. But they're being raised by you, and you guys are watching this video, which means you are further ahead than a lot of dog parents right now. Your dogs are going to be fine, and I'm, I'm really excited about seeing the world's best trained dogs ever out at dog parks because most people don't train their dogs and most people don't train them to the, de to the degree that you are going to train yours. So it's all good. So don't worry. I hope that you have found this helpful. I, um, if you don't already know, I just set up a Facebook group called Puppy Raising with Pet School. And I would love for you to join the group. I'm going to be teaching in there a lot. Um, I'm going to be helping out a lot. I'm going to be answering any questions that you have. And I would love to see you in there. And yeah, please just go and give your dogs lots of love, lots of training. And let me know how it's going. You guys take care. Bye.